Welcome to the Kingdom Hairstylist Podcast. This is your host, Billy Jean. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to a new episode of Kingdom Hairstylist. This is your host. My name is Billie Jean. Thank you all for tuning in. I know that it has been a while. I know y'all probably like this girl is just so inconsistent. Um, I understand that. But, you know, I try to make sure that I get on here when I really, really, really have a word or, you know, some type of message or something that I'm going through that I can share with you all. Um, But then there are times that I just really cannot get on here because I just don't have nothing to say or... Um, I might just be so busy at that moment that I don't even have the time to record. Um, Also, you know, I keep telling y'all about Miley. It's hard to find time when he's not making a whole bunch of noise. Um, I don't know what I was thinking about getting a dog. They just are a lot of work. But anyway, I love my baby and I'm not going to get rid of him. So it is what it is. (laughs) So today um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some stuff that Um, God has been revealing to me just some different things that have been going on and also my trip to Houston. Um, I'm not sure if you all are following me on Instagram, but if you're not, go ahead and follow me at Kingdom Hairstylist on Instagram and Facebook. I tried to post um, as much as I could from my trip that I went on last week, I think, or was it the week before that? It was the week of June 4th, whatever, whatever day that was, whatever week that was, that's when I went to Houston. Um, I went to Houston for a business class. Um, one thing that you will learn about me is that I love to invest in myself. Um, I take a lot of classes. I always study. I'm always studying, like I'm always trying to figure out the best way to do something. And there are a lot of people out here that I don't mind giving my money to because I know that they give, that they bring good results. And I've seen their work and I've seen the fruit in their lives. And I've seen everything that they've gone through because they're like me where they're very transparent. Um, So I really don't mind spending money, especially when I know it's going to be something that's going to better me or, you know, just give me a better opportunity in life. So I have, that's, that's a word right there for somebody. You have to invest in yourself. It's going to cost you one way or the other. You either pay for the class and learn what you need to know or lose out on money and don't make any money because you didn't take the classes that you needed to better yourself. So I've been investing in myself for years, like years. And that is why I believe that I am where I am today. No, I'm not at a million dollars yet. But I'm getting there. I'm climbing up the ladder and I just speak it over my life. And I speak. I try to speak it over my life every day. I learned that from this lady, Pastor Beth. She said to say that you that money comes to you every day. So I say that all the time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about uh, investing in yourself, taking time for yourself. You can get burnt out as a hairstylist, just being behind a chair every day not taking time for yourself, not investing in yourself to grow you, you know, to get you in a better position. I don't want to do hair forever. So I'm at the stage where I'm trying to figure out the best way to retire, the best way to stop, the best way to uh, get more passive income and just to have more streams of income. And I know that it's going to work. Something is going to work. Somebody once said, and I believe his name is Neo Davis. It has to work or it has to work. So whatever I'm doing is going to work. And I'm going to continue on investing in myself. I just spent another hundred dollars this morning for another class. Um, I'm just always, I don't want to be a slave to my money. I don't want to hold on to it so tight and never invest in anything. And, you know, just never put it to work for me that's what we're supposed to do with money we're supposed to use it as a resource to to get us to where we need to be so that's how the houston trip went it was absolutely wonderful um i traveled by myself i went i left on a thursday and i came back on monday um i think it's very important to reset and so whenever i take a trip i try to go by myself um just so that i can be in the hotel room, spend some time with God, get clarity from God, 
and just learn to love myself again and spend time with myself because you know when you are a mom and a wife and a business owner sometimes you tend to give so much more um you you tend to just give so much more of yourself and then you don't have anything left you have you don't have anything else to to give and it's like you can give it if you give yourself a reset if you take some time for yourself and replenish yourself um reset everything your mindset reset everything and you will come back refreshed so that's what happened i went on a trip i reset i spent so much time just talking to god listening to god loving on god letting god love on me um i cried to him about some things i'm not gonna lie and I know he gets tired of me complaining. So he just showed me some things that's wrong with me so that I can stop crying to him all the time because it's not about um, somebody else all the time or something else. Sometimes it's just the decisions you make. And God is so good. He's so merciful and so faithful and so loving and just so kind and so generous. I mean, I could go on and on and on with every adjective to describe God that every good one anyway to describe God because he's just so good in so many ways and in this season I'm just learning so much about spending time with him and actually making Holy Spirit my best friend I learned that from the Tiffany Montgomery myself when I was out in Houston because I went to the cover by God and the main thing she talked about was making Holy Spirit your best friend Um, That's something that I can honestly say that I have not done. Um, I definitely, I definitely have a good relationship with God, but I can't honestly say that I stop at every waking moment and ask Holy Spirit, what should I do next? A lot of times I just do what I want to do and then I go and cry. <laughs> so I'm trying to reverse it. I'm trying to grow and mature as much as I can. And another thing is so good to get compliments like um, they can see, that people can see my growth. You don't understand how many people reach out to me. And it's been putting me in this very emotional state because I'm not doing life with God so that everybody can applaud me. Like, I'm doing this because I don't have a choice. Because God is the only way. Because God is my only way. I don't have another way. Um, But it feels good when I get messages from people, like different people. Um, Even some people know me and some people don't know me. And they'll say, like, wow, your your, um, spiritual growth is amazing. Or I see that you're growing so much in God and that it's just sparking something in me. And, you know, when I hear stuff like that, it just... It makes me feel good that people on the outside can see it um, it, because I'm working hard at it. And I know that, you know, with God, he always reminds me that it's not a performance. Like he never wanted me to give him a performance. He wants me to be honest with him. He wanted me to give him my heart. He wanted me to give him my yes. And that's all that he ever wanted from me. So I just try my very best to walk according to his word. I've been reading a whole lot more of the Bible so that I can get understanding. Um, It's sad that, you know, some people don't really want you to grow. Like, you know, they may say things like, oh, you, you like, oh, you like a real Christian. So you, you know, so it's like they want you to stay stuck. But I know that that's the trick of the enemy. And I know that that's what he wants. And he definitely says stuff like that, you know, or has other people to say things like that to me to make me go backwards. But I don't care who you are. You can be my mother. <laughs> you can be my son. If you don't like what I'm doing or you don't like the fact that I'm putting God above all else like he asks us to do in his word, then you can just go. I, I really, really, really feel strongly about saying that. Like, I don't need friends like that. I don't need people in my life like that because you should really be excited about the fact that I have a loving relationship with our God, our Father. Um, God is good. Like, I, I can't, I just, I don't know. I always tell my testimony on here about how I've been in relationship with God since I was a little girl. 
Um, no, I didn't stay on the right path. Of course, I had a baby out of wedlock. Um, I got in some trouble before with the law. I um, gossip a lot. You know, I don't always say the right things out of my mouth. I don't always treat people the right way. Um, I'm learning so much, but I'm not going to let anybody knock me back down to the old Billy. And I know I'm changing because the way some of these situations are coming at me right now, like I would have never handled these things the way that I handle them now if I did not have the relationship that I have now with our father. Um, So I'm proud of myself. I'm very proud of where I've come from. I'm proud of where I'm going. I'm proud that nothing can take me off of this, uh, this relationship that I have with God. Nothing can change my mind. Um, it was funny because last week, or no, it wasn't last week. It probably was like three weeks ago. Um, and I'm not telling this story to like brag or boast or nothing like that. I'm just literally being transparent like I always do. Um, I got a new vehicle because I needed one. Um, my car was falling apart. And I keep everything for as long as I can keep it. Like my phone. My, I need a new phone. My phone is raggedy. You know, it overheats. It cuts off sometimes when it feel like it. It might not do. It might not move. It may stay right there. But I don't. I just don't believe in just wasting money. And I don't like to um, just get things before it's time. But when it gets to a point where it's like not gonna work at all, or when it's too much that I'm putting into it then I know it's time. And so I prayed very hard about the decision to get a new vehicle because you know how it is when you pay off something or you're close to paying off something and it's like everything falls apart. It's like, yeah, we just need you to get a new one. And so I prayed and asked God to help me make a good decision, excuse me, um, because I didn't want to just go out here and just get anything and then just be putting myself in a messed up, financial situation because I have things going on right now, you know, and I honestly did not want to spend the money. I didn't want to put down a down payment and, you know, I I really needed to save for some things that I have going on. So, um, I prayed, I just prayed about it. And I, you know, before I went in there, I said, you know, God, here's where I'm at. This is what my credit looks like. This is what I'm working with. But, you know, the desire of my heart is to really get the vehicle that I've been wanting forever. And I was like, you know, if it can happen for me, then great. And if it's not for me, then, you know, just let me know, you know, cause I'll keep the vehicle and just keep on putting money into it and doing everything. Even though it got so many miles on it, I'll do whatever you tell me to do because that's the space that I'm in is in a space of obedience. So, you know, I get to the dealership and I get, I was able to get the vehicle that I wanted and I didn't have to put down as much as I thought I would have to put down. So it was like everything worked so good. So then a few days later, um, I get a call from the dealership. They're like, you know, we need you to come in. We got We had to rewrite the contract and add some things and change some things. But the good news is that your car note is going to go down from what we originally told you the other day. I'm like, okay, I like that. So I go back to the dealership and it was raining that day. Get everything signed and everything um on the way home from the dealership i'm all excited and i'm just like thanking god and just telling him about how good he is and how he just care about even the small things that we go through and everything he just gives us all of our heart's desires and just always looking now he's just the man and you know i just was just bragging on him and just worshiping him and just listening to my music as i always do my gospel music and just driving and it was raining, like I stated. And all of a certain, not sudden, I just heard this bam on the windshield. And the glass shattered. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to lie. For a second, I thought I got shot. <laughs> Y'all should have seen me in that car looking around. Because whatever it was hit that windshield that hard. And I could not see where it came from because it was raining. I can't even see what it was. It might have been a brick. Um, I'm not sure, but the area that I was riding in, they have some construction going on. So I'm not sure if it like just flew up and it hit the windshield, but yeah. So yeah, absolutely insane. I was so mad because 
there we go. I got to replace the whole windshield before I even pay the car note. So I guess I called to my insurance. You know, they tell me my deductible. And then they also tell me that, you know, if it's under the deductible, I just pay that. And then I don't have to worry about, you know, paying the deductible. So, yeah, $400 to replace that windshield. But that was another trick from the enemy because he's, he just think he's so slick. Like, he like, yeah, I'm going to ruin her day. I'm going to ruin everything for her. I'm going to make her feel like getting that vehicle was the worst thing she could have ever did. I'm going to make her feel like she made a mistake. I'm going to make her feel like, aha, now you got to pay this before you even pay the car note. So guess what I did? I didn't do what I normally do. I normally get upset. I normally cry because I'm just so emotional. Um, And then I normally call people and talk about it and all of that. I didn't do none of that. I literally did none of that. I said, you know, well, God, I know that you'll make a way for me to be able to pay for this windshield. I just put my money down on this car and, you know, I don't really want to spend nothing else, but I know that you got me. And so I went home and I was okay. I ain't say nothing to nobody. Um, When I got to work the next day, I, you know, called to make the appointment to get the windshield replaced. And that's the only time I talked about it. And I got the windshield replaced. Um, you know, they came to me and did it. I paid the 400 And I just haven't looked back. I just thank God that I have a job where I just literally can go to work and do maybe one or two people and get that kind of money and just be able to pay what I got to pay. Um, I thank God that I thank God that he allows me and affords me um, resources where I can provide for myself and for my family. Um, God is just so good. So I shared that because I just wanted y'all to know like how the devil always playing, always trying. So, okay. So moving forward, the trip was wonderful. Went to cover by God. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, the service was so great. And then the class was Saturday. I, I had so much fun at that class. The class was so long guys. It was from 11 a.m. to like 7 30. We was in there cutting up, having a great time. But the class was all about um, entrepreneurship and just get, it's like, the reason why I went is because I feel like sometimes you have to get out of an environment to get new ideas. So like sometimes when you're at home or at work, you know, you're just so busy with your day-to-day routine that you don't really have time to sit back and really think of new ideas to implement in your business or new ideas that you want to start or launch. So sometimes you got to get out of one space and move into another space so that you can get ideas. So being around all those women, it was over a hundred and something people there, but being around all those women and getting different ideas and, you know, you don't even, sometimes you don't even have to open up your mouth and ask a question because There's going to be a whole bunch of people that ask the same question that you have. So it's just beautiful to be around like-minded people. There are a lot of people that won't agree with entrepreneurship because it's not for everybody. You know, it's not for everybody. Entrepreneurship is very hard. Um, If you don't have the right tools, if you don't take classes, if you don't invest in yourself, it can be very hard. Um, You got to have a lot of trust in God. You got to have a lot of faith. And God, because sometimes you're going to step out on faith. Sometimes you're going to make a decision that you don't even know if you're going to be able to eat for another couple of days because you got to spend money. Um, Sometimes it's just hard. It's just not always easy. And people that get a paycheck, you know, they love it because they know that they're getting paid every two weeks. Whereas with us, we don't know how much we're going to get. We may get more than we got last week. We may get less. You know, we might get double the amount that we had last week. We may get triple. We don't never. It's like always an element of surprise. And if you're not mapping out goals and, you know, like for me, I say I want to do this amount of people, new new people this month, or I want to do this amount of money. I want to double this. So I want to, you know, increase it by another thousand. Um, if you're not setting goals for yourself, then yes, it will be tough for you. So let's get into today's topic. All of that was just pretty much how the Houston trip was, but I want to move into what I really wanted to talk about. I titled today's episode, God is in control, and I'll tell you why. I titled it that because 
as I was on the plane um, coming back, it was like a four, three and a half hour ride on the plane um, from Houston. Well, actually, I think I was in New, yeah, I was in New Orleans. So New Orleans to back to D.C., it was like a three and a half hour um, ride. And I was like tired, but I wasn't extremely tired because I rested a lot on the trip. But I was tired because I had to get up so early, you know, to get my first flight um, from Houston to New Orleans and then from New Orleans to, you know, home. So I was just a little tired. So anyway, I'm on the, I'm on a plane and I'm reading my Bible and I'm just reading, you know, reading different stuff. I'm reading the, the Psalm of the day. I'm reading the proverb of the day. I try to read, you know, every day a Psalm, a Psalm and a proverb. Some days I don't, you know, get it. I may read something else, but anyway I'm reading and the guy next to me he's like looking at you know what I'm reading and stuff and I see him but I just try not to pay him any attention so um I got sleepy so I closed up the book and I put it you know put it down in my carry-on bag and so as I'm sitting there like I'm just thinking and I'm asking God questions in my mind and I'm just like you know God like I almost felt like I sounded like David. I was just like, you know, God, why is it taking like so long for you to answer all of my prayers? Like I've been asking you for certain things and you have been answering some of the stuff, but it's like some big stuff that I'm like waiting on. And you've already given me the promise that these things are going to happen, but I'm just trying to figure out like when, and I like, you know, I'm telling God, I'm like, I know I'm being impatient. But some of this stuff is uncomfortable, like waiting. And I'm just ready. I'm ready for, you know, what you have for me. And so, I'm again, I'm trying to make Holy Spirit my best friend. That's something that I just learned a few days before I'm having this conversation with God. So I said, Holy Spirit, I said, why does it seem like it takes our Father so long, like, to get back to us with things? And it's like. I'm just ready. I'm just tired of being in this position and I'm just ready for something new. And I'm just like getting so anxious and I need you to help me through this, navigate through this because I don't want to do the wrong thing and it's going to delay it even more. And I'm trying to be very obedient to God. And, you know, I'm just having this whole conversation. So next thing I know, I hear the Holy Spirit tell me I am the pilot. So I'm sitting there like, hmm. So a few minutes later, the pilot comes on, you know, over the intercom and says, hey, everybody. So we are we are not too far away from uh, Ronald Reagan. But, you know, there's some clouds and, you know, it's they may they said it's possible that it's going to be a storm. So you may feel like a little turbulence um, and I might have to take, you know, I might have to take it may take a little bit longer for us to get where we're going because I just want to make sure that it's clear. You know, I want to make sure that I take my time and and get y'all there safely. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I, you know, I close my eyes again. And as I'm sitting there, like I heard Holy Spirit say, that's it. God is the pilot of your life. So you have to trust him. He is in control. He can see things that you can't even see. He knows things that you don't even know. And so it's taking him a little longer to answer your prayers because he's getting things in order. And I just was like, yes, yes, God, yes. So it was really, really mind blowing and really good. And God was just speaking to me the whole flight. I mean, just showing me different things. Like he just, I would look out the window and I would see like the clouds and He was telling me that, you know, look at the shape of them. They all have different shapes. And he like, if I'm the God that formed all of this, like I formed each cloud. Like, do you know how amazing that is? Have you ever been in an airplane and looked out and just saw each shape? Like there's some little, some medium size, some are huge. Some just don't even have a form or shape. It's just a line. And it's just like, oh, it just, it really brought me to tears like because I was just sitting there like how dare I question my father how dare I question how long something gonna take when he can see what I can't see 
when he knew how everything was going to go before it even went that way, when he formed me in my mother's womb, when he knew exactly what I would be like, he knew what I would say, he knew what I would do, he knew the kind of job I would have, he knew the type of family I would have, he knew the type of husband I would have, he knew what type of kids I would have. He knew he knows even the things that I'm going through now that are even very difficult for me. He knew all of these things before I even knew it. So I was like, okay, God, all right, I get it. I hear you. You are the man. So I'm not going to question this no more. But that was the revelation that I got is just that like God is literally in control. Like you have no worries with him being a pilot. You have no worries because he going to make sure he land that thing safely. And that wasn't it. God didn't stop talking to me right there. As we get into, you know, where you where you land, we already landed and now we're pulling in. Now you know, I don't know the specific name for these people that, you know, that take the little um uh, sticks and like guide the pilot, you know, I don't know, you know, the real name, but you know, they guiding them. And God was showing me, those are, those are what my angels do. You know, I send angels to help you. So if you need more strength, if you need anything else from me, while you wait, while you endure, while you go through what you're going through, just call on me. Call on me and I'm going to send help. I'm going to send help. So I hope and pray that this blessed you. Because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He know everything. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. He knows the outcome. He can see when somebody's treating you a certain way. He can see what they're going through. And so he protects you and shields you from certain things. Even if it means a separation. Even if it means you can't be around this person. Um, and even if he knows he got to break something up. A friendship. A relationship. Even if he knows that he got to put things back together. He going to do that. So it's like you can't never lose with God. So there's some things that I'm, I feel like I'm going through and I'm just feeling like, God, is this going to be a loss? You know, is this going to be how this ends? And he just showing me all the time, like, you don't, you don't know because I, I know your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. So that's Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. I'm going to put that in the show notes. But he was just telling me, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. So I have a beautiful ending for you. All you got to do is trust me. All you have to do is trust me. You've been faithful. You've been righteous. You've been doing everything that I've asked you to do. So you don't have to worry about the outcome. You don't have to worry about what it's going to look like for you. Just know that I love you. Just know that I want what's best for you. Just know that I'll stop a plane for you. Just know that I'll make sure that the landing is clear before I land you. Just know that that is how much I love you. So yes, God loves us. He loves us so much. So with all of that being said, you guys have a blessed rest of the week. I love y'all so much. And I want to pray before I end just because I've, don't do it that often on here and it's something that I really need to do because some people will hear this word or hear this message and they won't do anything with it they'll get off of here and just still go and worry because I'm that person sometimes I do that so heavenly father I thank you so much for each and every listener that is tuning into this podcast father God I thank you that they have somehow landed on this page. I thank you that they have somehow landed on this station. I don't know where they're listening from, Father God, but according to the records, they are coming from all different places, Father God. So I pray and ask you to cover them. I pray that you give them ears to hear you and eyes to see you. Father, may you remove every scale from their eyes so that they can see you at work in their lives and may you remove anything that's hindering them from hearing you father god anything that is hindering them whether it be bad friendships bad advice whether it be um, just their own negative thinking whatever it may be father that's keeping them from hearing your voice father god Whatever hindrance, whatever blockage may be there. Father, I pray that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you give them an 
overflow of love today, Father God, that you would send them your love, that you would send them your grace, that you would send them your mercy, Father God, that you would heal them, every broken heart, every broken place. Even if they have a hard time having a relationship with you, Father, I pray that you would show them how to have a relationship with you. God, I love you. We love you. And we thank you for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like it, subscribe to it, and share it with all of your friends.